Sandy Cheeks is something so commonly employed it seems that people overlook it and don't discuss the real definition. It's a photographic cliché. Bikini Bottom is named, of course, after a swimsuit, or what eventually became the name of a swimsuit after nuclear testing made the area famous. But in Sandy Cheeks' case, it's an elaboration on that pun because women who are photographed on beaches have done what they call the sandy buns shot so many times that they, they laugh and oh it's time to do it again and turn it you know, like they do on Sports Illustrated specials. They'll make jokes about it because it's such a common thing to have a picture of women with sandy cheeks in this situation. Now this has become perhaps a cover story or a means of deflecting from discussion of human cloning it seems to me because you usually find global warming and human cloning paired together and in the doomsday analysis of what's supposed to destroy the world, you now have global warming added on as something that's supposed to destroy the world when it would actually make it more habitable and increase the availability of water because you need more energy to evaporate water and have it fall as rain. So the Sandy Cheeks dilemma that Spongebob encounters is an extension of his anxiety about clothes. For some reason there's it's a symbolic that Spongebob cannot accept the means of regenerating and making himself immortal and young because he has to keep his clothes on. When Sandy invents a cloning machine, he has to take the clothes off in order to use it. This is especially bizarre because for a clone, a cloning animal, a animal that can clone itself naturally, a cloning machine is just a placebo. It's, it's unnecessary and Spongebob routinely takes part of his body off and reattaches it and like a starfish if he were cut up presumably he could grow into multiple more versions of himself. So there's this weirdness that is connected with Sandy and his wearing of pants that is fundamental to the, the central dilemma of the character. How he comes to terms with these means of being young and immortal when he's both fascinated and repelled by them at the same time. This is also seen in his relationship with jellyfish. Jellyfish are the officially recognized, or one kind is the officially recognized animal that is immortal. And yet the jellyfish are for the most part incommunicative in the episodes I've seen. They just float around and Spongebob chases them with a net and they shock him the way that Dr. Frankenstein would shock pieces of a corpse that he's put together to bring them to life. And this is done to his neighbor. <laughs> it's a sort of torture perhaps to try to wake him up to the possibility of living, who knows. But there's also an invasion in one episode of jellyfish who try to clone everyone and this is seen as a horrible thing which Spongebob and Sandy stop. So this seems to be at the core of the identity of Spongebob the anxiety of having the means of cloning available and somehow being psychologically unable, unable to use them. And even the connection of cloning and humanity, which is, I suppose, easier to imagine having a sponge do it. And from there, the anxiety about having to reveal oneself for what one is underneath one's clothes and being unable to clone oneself without accepting oneself truly as one is.